Astronauts on long interplanetary trips will face at least two kinds of radiation hazards. The first is a more or less constant but relatively low dose from sources outside of our solar system. Exploding stars, black hole jets, spinning pulsars and others. These are called galactic cosmic rays, GCRs for short, and they're very energetic. It would be hard to build enough mass into any spacecraft to protect crew members from them. But they're relatively few and far between. The other radiation risk comes from the sun. Coronal mass ejections, often associated with stormy flares, create volleys of nasty solar energetic particles. SEPs, they're called. Sometimes the sun is quiet. Other times it can get quite tempestuous. The good news is, standard spacecraft shielding is much more effective at stopping SEPs energized by the sun's tantrums. But amidst all this, how will people on deep space missions fare? Two, one. On November 26, 2011, the Mars Science Lab mission, with its Curiosity rover, was dispatched across the ocean of space to the fourth planet from the Sun. It carried a radiation assessment detector, nicknamed the RAD, to make detailed measurements of the threats that humans will face. Assuming it would take about 180 Earth days to get to Mars, double that to go round trip, the RAD instrument has found that astronauts could get more than the currently accepted lifetime career dose of radiation just during the crossings to and from the Red Planet. And depending on how habitats on Mars are designed and shielded, explorers could get much more radiation because Mars' thin atmosphere and weak magnetic field offers much less protection than we who evolved on Earth can live with. So does this imply that we humans are completely locked out of investigating and colonizing the space beyond Earth? Well, almost surely not. But if we're serious about going to Mars or deeper, a set of technological solutions will need to be found. For Space.com, I'm Dave Brody. Space.com.